All right, you guys, welcome back to Epic Adventures Off-Road. So I know you guys have been asking for this for a long time. And uh, frankly, I've just been slacking. I, I'm busy and whatever else, whatever excuse you can think of, it's just been a lot going on. So here I am, I'm gonna do a walk around of the truck for you guys, show you what I have on the truck. You know, I'm not gonna do a bunch of glamor shots and all that stuff. Like the truck is what it is. I use it off-road, I use it for work. I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's a multi-purpose truck. I use it for all my camping. It does exactly what I need it to do, and I love it for that, um, but it's not a show truck. And uh, yeah, it works really well for what I do. So, all right, I'll take you around and show you what I got. All right, so uh, let's start with the front. So headlights, I have a Morimoto headlights. These have the uh, LED in the bottom there, and uh, they do not switch back or anything. They're just a solid white LED whenever the truck's running. So it's kind of a running light. I have a pair of uh, rigid pods in here. And then I have the diode dynamics. And then I have another set of diode dynamics. These are the, uh, the lens on this is a um, SAE or the driving lens. So they have kind of a cutoff to them. So those are something I can use while I'm driving, which is nice. These are just a full, these are a spot and flood combo. And then as well as these lights up here. So these brackets are from SDHC. Uh, they, you have to cut the fairing up here in order to get those to fit in there. And then more pods with a spot and flood combo. Also diode dynamics. Um, I have the Badlands Apex 12,000 pound winch in there with a synthetic line. This is a chassis unlimited octane bumper. I've been really happy with that bumper so far. Um, it is a three piece design, so you do bolt it together. Uh, these wings on the sides here, so like this piece here and that one are also, they're separate. So like you bolt it together with grade eight hardware. Um, I'll show you how that mounts. So these mount using these two bolts here. Um, I, to me that design works fine. Um, I've heard some people say like, oh, you should use, you know, a one piece design and have like a different mounting system. But so far it's worked great and I've pulled out a decent amount of stuff and including myself with that winch and I've had no issues. Um, and I think that's it on the front. Okay, so moving on to suspension, I have the Carly 2.5 pin top system in here. Uh, that includes coil springs, uh, King 2.5 shocks, um, and then I have the Carly sway bar. So that comes with the end links and the whole new sway bar system in there. It has the upgraded third gen style steering on there to get rid of the crappy style that they had before. It's just, this is just a lot stronger in there. Um, it has the limiting straps and let's see here. So these are the Carly high, uh, high clearance control arms. And for those of you with the keen eye, you'll notice that I have a Bluetooth front drive shaft. I did a uh, G56 swap like last weekend, and I do not have my front drive shaft in after swapping from an auto to a manual. So, um, yeah, so back to suspension. So that's kind of the front setup on that. The back has an Adelief pack from Carly, and it just makes it ride a little bit better back there. And it's also progressive, and then you can see the uh, King 2.5s back there, those are valved by Carly. So for wheels, I believe that these are Method 305s. These are 17 by eight and a half with a 4.75 inch back spacing. And I'm running 37 12 fives uh, for tires. Right now I have a Milestar Patagonia on there. Um, I don't know how long I'll stick with that. They are, they are super good off-road. They have great traction and everything, but they, um, they do not wear great on the highway. So I think that would be my only complaint with these. Otherwise, they're a fantastic tire. Um, the wheels, though, they have the bead grip technology, so you can actually air down quite a bit on those. So really, really nice wheels. I like these a lot. Um, and if any of the DTX guys watch this, yeah, I'm running no hubcaps for you guys. Okay, let me show you the inside. So nothing super fancy, but uh, as you can see, it's now a six-speed. And I uh, did all that myself in a weekend, actually. It was a lot of work, but totally worth it. Now I don't have to deal with that automatic that never knew where it needed to be, what gear it needed to be in. <laughs> um, so I do have EFI Live. As you can see, the knob is here. Um, 
I have the Edge CTS3, I have a transmission temperature and a boost gauge up here, mechanical. Um, and I have the aux beam here for my lighting controls. That actually works really well, pretty happy with that. So I'll be putting out a video on that so you guys can see that too. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's about it inside. I'll show you the back here real quick. So I do have um, from Blue Ridge Overland Gear, this back seat panel. Yeah, I have a ton of keys. <laughs> um, keep some medical stuff. Uh, and I have a couple different pouches with just other essentials that I like to keep in there. Um, the, uh, some people are going to ask, so the seat covers are from Cover King. It's a black multicam, uh, pretty basic, but they've held up well for me for a couple years now. Keep a medical kit in here. Um, so this is a full uh, med kit. I have a bag valve mask and I have all of my bleeding control, airway stuff, uh, everything that I keep in there, tourniquets, uh, splints. You know, basic first aid supplies uh, and that's that's about it that stuff stays in there and then I have like some other camera equipment and stuff for camping that I'm doing right now I'll pop the hood and show you guys that too so it's gonna be a little dirty under here but uh, okay so I did a Second gen swap, so I got rid of the stock VGT Turbo and I now have an S467.7 with a Steed Speed manifold. Um, and it has the downpipe attachment for that and everything. New, it comes with a new intercooler uh, line that you can kind of see down there. I did put in an aftermarket aluminum radiator after breaking it on that trip up to Shasta. That's held up really well so far, pretty happy with that. Um, I have a boost gauge routed in here. Here's the controls, uh, control box for the uh, aux beam. That actually works, yeah, super happy with that. I'll show you the inside of that real quick. Okay, so there's the inside of the uh, aux beam control panel. So this is all encased in like a resin, so you don't have to deal with um, anything, like all the dust and everything that gets in there, and then all your wiring goes in, and it has different amp spots here, so I still have a couple of spots open on that, but yeah, works really well. The wiring for the winch is over here with the cutoff switch. Uh, in case something goes wrong with the winch, you can shut that off. I do want to mention that I, I put the, um, I did the fiberglass wrap on the downpipe. And I also put a uh, blanket on the exhaust housing for the turbo. Makes a big difference with engine bay heat. Um, and then I'm running a different filter with this kit. I got this kit from AGP Turbo. Um, but I am running a power-driven diesel uh, filter there. I really like those guys and what they do. So, yeah, I think that's about it for the engine. And I have a, along that note, I have a four-inch straight pipe in there. So, she sounds good, not overly loud. Um, and let's see here. I'll show you underneath the back. So, you can kind of see. I've got the Firestone Ride Right airbags. Uh, and the four inch exhaust obviously comes out under there. Kind of had to piece something together to get that out from under the truck. The guy that I bought it from had terminated it right up above the axle and it was just too loud. So getting it out from under the truck helped a lot. Um, yeah, so back to suspension. It's got the, uh, the Ada Leaf, the King 2.5s, and the Firestone Ride Right airbags with cradles. That's an important note too. The cradles make a big difference because it allows the airbag to uh, detach from the axle and then go back into its cradle. That way you get full expansion or a full droop and everything on your uh, suspension. So kind of an important point and I've been really happy with those so far. The uh, I ran the airlines back here up to the sides of the license plate there and that way I can just air them up. I carry a little Milwaukee 12 volt air compressor that I can just plug in there and air them up and it's super fast so yeah um okay on to the camper so this is a uh at overland atlas i bought this from a good friend of mine um, and he had done 
a lot of the stuff that's that's done in here that we'll get to here in a minute but this has been a phenomenal camper this thing is very well built um i i have no complaints with this camper at all i love it uh so with the camper it has the arc turn uh, skylight which opens up as you can kind of see it sticking up up there that has lighting in it as well as bug screen and uh, sunshade I'll show you that here in a minute the awning um, is a Bush Company 270 degree max awning so that's why it gives you this extra wing that comes up to the front and it is legless obviously which I absolutely love uh, you can walk all the way around your camper and not have anything get in the way and it holds up really well in the wind i've had no issues at all with wind it is very stout so super happy with this awning um, and there's some lighting and some stuff that's on there some like little led you know strip lights that are on there that plug into the usb um, this is the rigged ultra swing setup so also bought that from the guy that I bought the uh, camper from. So he, he had set this up already, but he put the Rotopax on there or the Rotopax mount and the, he came up, this is a marine propane tank that fits in a carrier for a power tank. So a lot of the guys that do a lot of off-roading if they're airing down and they're up and down all the time, they'll have a power tank set up. And so instead of a power tank, it's a propane tank, it works really well. I have the stock wheel uh the stock spare with a uh, Nittle Ridge Grappler 37 so same size tire and everything but it's just a stock wheel and yeah, it's just a steely but it is what it is it'll do the job if I get in a pinch um, this has the uh, fold down table which I put my stove on as you can see and then it's got a cutting board that slides out of there which you can use which is uh, really nice this is um, it also has a pass-through hitch on it so you can actually tow, I believe it's up to 10,000 pounds off of the same um, receiver. So basically it's extending it out and then you would put a hitch right in there and you can tow with that. This, when you mount this system into your truck, it has a uh, bolt and a wedge that are on the other end of this receiver. So when you slide them in there, you stick a 19 mil in there and you tighten it up by using impact. And this thing is rock solid, doesn't move at all while you're driving around. Um, and that's with a 37 on it. So. Really sweet setup, so highly recommend these guys. And I've paid for all of the stuff that I have. None of this is uh, <laughs> sponsored. So this is just from everyday experience. Uh, okay, we'll move to the inside of the camper. So it's a National Luna fridge. I believe that this is a, I'm trying to remember, I think it's a 70 liter, that's how they measure it. Um, Works really well. It's got the thermostat controls and everything down there. Uh, this has been on and running since I bought the truck because the Red Arc system that's in the truck uh, has solar panels on the roof and everything, and that keeps it topped off. Like I, I've never once turned that refrigerator off. I have it in the truck on all the time, and it's been running nonstop, and it has just been bulletproof. So uh, really uh, happy with that as well. I don't remember who makes this fridge slider. Um, but those are pretty, pretty common. So yeah, so here's the inside of this fridge. Uh, I've got some beer and water and other stuff in there, but uh, it's a fr you can, and it is dual climate. So you can do a freezer on one side and fridge on the other, which is what a lot of people do, but I, uh, I don't really take a lot of frozen stuff with me. So yeah, so that's the fridge. If you have any questions, leave something in the comments on that. Um, the truck has a 35 gallon fresh water tank up in the front. I will show you that in a minute, but it comes out right here. It has a whole filter system and everything. Um, and it goes through with the pump and then, so you can put just regular old hose water in there and it's perfectly safe to drink. Um, again, Arctic turn windows on both sides. Those have bug screens and, uh, and the shades in there, the sunshade. So. Let me hop up in here and I'll kind of show you guys around. Along with the Red Arc system, there is a diesel heater that's in this compartment. I'll, take, I'll show you guys this real quick. So it's kind of hard to see, but 
diesel heater is back here. This is all mounted to this extruded aluminum track. Tank is here. The controls for it are out here. Plus I have a uh, remote that I can use to turn it on and off if I'm up in the bed. So that works awesome. Um, it'll keep this camper at a perfectly uh, reasonable temperature, even when it's very cold outside. So, uh, so that's the diesel heater that's in there. So again, the guy that I bought this from, he actually built this entire interior and it was for an 06 Dodge Ram and mine's an 08. And thankfully the, uh, the whole bed system is exactly the same. So that's, that was one of the big selling points was I was able to just buy this and have this just swap over into my truck from his. So, um, yeah, so he built all of this, which was awesome. I keep uh, recovery gear and I have some straps and some other stuff in there. Um, and then just more storage in there. I have some camp chairs and some other stuff. Okay, on to some of these other areas. So this comes out, which is pretty sweet. Uh, that way you can actually have more space down on the bottom. So that whole piece would lift out. And then if I wasn't, if I didn't have these containers in there, you have more walking space in here if you were like hanging out and if it's a rainy day or something. Um, so in this side, I have my Yankum rope that my wife got me for Christmas. That's been awesome. I've already used it to pull out quite a few people. And then got my Adventure Tool Company toolkit. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on that and what I carry. That's been quite handy. I have the Morflate system. It's also in some of my videos. Uh, that's how I air up and air down. And then back here, you can kind of see the uh, water system here. So that thing has been great. So Guzzle H2O, you guys should check them out. Throw this back in. I have some other stuff down here. I carry like a bathroom, uh, like a portable, like pop-up bathroom and some other things too. So that's been, uh, that compartment's kind of a catch-all for some of the bigger gear. Um, and then I guess the big important one back here. Okay, so in this back compartment, this is a 35 gallon water tank. So tons of water. <laughs> Uh, I actually, again, that was from that same guy. So I probably, if, if I do anything different in here at some point, I'll probably downgrade that to like a 10 gallon water tank. I think that that would be perfectly adequate for what I do. Um, the fill is here, comes in through the outside of the, uh, camper. And then it's also got a, a shore power hookup. So you can kind of see that. So that goes into this whole red arc system, which we're about to go over. So you have the red vision, you have the manager 30 and down on the bottom, down there, that red, you can kind of see it is the, uh, 1500 watt inverter. So that system combined with the solar panels works really well to keep this whole place powered up. And, uh, I, well, so a big part of that down here, there's a 270 amp hour or 240. I can't remember. Uh, Battleborn lithium battery. And that battery combined with the whole Red Arc system and the uh, water tank and, and the solar panels and all that, it's just, it's a very self-sustaining uh, setup. So um, yeah, let me know if you guys have questions on anything specific in there. And okay, up top to the sleeping area. So this has the insulation pack on it. I believe that's what uh, AT Overland calls it. Um, and it has the roof fan. This is awesome. This is one of my favorite things. I use this all the time whenever I'm camping, uh, especially if it's warm and you can get a, a breeze moving through here. It makes a huge difference. And yep, yeah, so this is the Arctic Turn skylight. I have the bug screen closed on it right now. I'll open that. So that's all the way open and the sunshade. So if you wanted to pull that all the way closed, you can, and you can get pretty good light blockage through that. There's a little bit, but it's not bad. And then on that same system, there's a whole light setup, which really lights it up up here quite a bit. Um, almost too, too much. If you get up in the middle of the night, it's like, whoa, that is really bright in your eyes, but yeah. So 
I generally keep the bug screen closed and just use that as a nice ventilation through there. Um, so there's three layer systems. I'll turn this light back on. There's three layer systems on this. So there's a plastic and all of these Velcro onto each one of these strips on the side. So plastic liner, the regular tent side uh, fabric liner, and then the insulation liner. So you put all three up and then you've got, as you can see, three good layers there between you and the elements outside. So that makes a big difference. And there are three windows in this setup. You know what? I take that back. There's four. There's one behind me in right here as well. So yeah. Uh, I think that about covers it for up here. Uh, it does have a four inch thick mattress. This is something that the guy I bought it from had come up with. This has magnets in it and it magnets to the back window to give you some privacy inside the camper when you're in here. So I just keep that tucked up underneath the mattress for storage. Okay. All right, you guys. So I think that about wraps up the uh, walk around of the truck. If there's something that I forgot, then you guys let me know and be happy to answer in the comments or make a video on it or you know whatever whatever works um yeah truck is again not a show truck <laughs> but it's in good shape and it does what i need it to do and i've been really happy with it so all right guys uh i think that about wraps up the video for the truck walk around so if you guys have any questions or i missed something then let me know but i think that's about it um, I love this truck setup. It works really well for me. Camp setup is, you know, five to 10 minutes or whatever. Same for teardown. If you want to see some of that, then, uh, check out some of my camping videos. You'll see a lot more of the tear teardown, you know, setup and all that kind of stuff. So, so I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it makes a really big difference. If you guys like these videos, if you want to subscribe, I generally don't, you know, ask that or whatever, but if I look at my uh, YouTube analytics, um, like 98% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. <laughs> so um, if you guys enjoy this and you want to see more of this kind of content, then uh, hit that subscribe button and, you know, share it with your friends and just, you know, shoot me a comment, leave me a comment on there and let me know kind of what you guys want to see in the future. So I appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next one.